other. Um, so now we would like to invite Ajana Rutsalanti to give us a special lecture on the series on ASEAN political security community. If, uh, please give him a round of applause. from the Party of Political Science and Public Administration here at Chiang Mai University. Um, it is my great pleasure to be here today to talk to students from around the world. Because generally when we have to talk about um, art and security community or art and uh, economic community in Southeast Asia, generally students who come from Japan or um, most of them would be Thai students. But today uh, it would be my pleasure to share um, another dimension of ASEAN, which is ASEAN security and political community with you today. But before we get started, let me ask you, because we actually before I came here, yeah, and you didn't have any idea your academic background. So everyone here is from Chiang Mai University. Uh, so everyone registered as a student here. So you will be here for one year or half year or how long? For one year? Mm -hmm. Two years? Okay, so um, can I ask which health, which county are you from? Like um, social science, social science in department of or in, in which curriculum or RCSP. So your master student or our master student. So um, nursing, right? We have nursing students. Um, what else? Where are you from? Humanities. Humanities. Okay. So where are you from? Which um, you from like, um, I guess some of you might come from China, Vietnam, anyone from Vietnam? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, China, Vietnam, anyone from Vietnam? No, China, and you guys from Spain, Italy, France. Okay. Um, so at the back, are you from? <laughs> Sorry? Singapore. Singapore, and you? Uh, Germany. Germany. Okay, and you're from Bangladesh. Bangladesh. Okay. So, and um, you are the back then? No, I'm from Guatemala. Guatemala. Okay. Um, I think the program today that I'm going to share with you, I'm not going to say this a kind of spatial lecture, but it's just going to be an introduction to arts and security community, particularly when people um, come from abroad and they might have uh, uh, maybe a little bit. Um, knowledge background of the security community. Just as um, generally this is the first semester here in Thailand. In the next semester I teach um, regional comparative regionalism. So I have to introduce students to all the region as well. Like they have to know about Latin America, know about uh, uh, what is that called Central Asia or Africa or South Asia. But today what I want to share with you is about Southeast Asia but looking from different perspectives. We will look into security perspective of Southeast Asia. Okay. So how long have you been this year in Thailand? Less than six months? Less than six months? One year? Two years already? More than one year. But anyway, have, um, although you were saying for to be like less than six months, you travel around Chiang Mai, have you had any a chance to travel around Chiang Mai. So I presume that you might have experienced um, many cultural communities or ethnic minority groups here in Chiang Mai, right? So that is one of the problem of ASEAN. We um, have association of Southeast Asian nations, right? But the motto, the motto of ASEAN is one vision, one identity, and one community. That is the motto of ASEAN. But the problem is that when we talk about one vision, one identity, and one community, when we use the word one identity, what would this identity mean to you? Because out Southeast Asia, generally, even in Chiang Mai, you have experienced diversity, and, um, religious diversity, or ethnic diversity in Chiang Mai, or in the northern part of Thailand. And you might have seen that the diversity is so, you know, uh, you, so you mean here, and then you have to say that you try to have one identity, but because of the religion and the ethnicity that is so diverse, so what would be the identity of this diversity? 
So that is the main question of ours, and, and this diversity also cause um, security problem to this region as well. You can see that on the map, we have the diversity in the mainland Southeast Asia, ethnic groups, and there are, there are, many, kind, there are many kinds of ethnic groups in um, the greater Mampo subregion area or mainland Southeast Asia, or in the Philippines, or in Indonesia. Every part of Southeast Asia is so diverse, and um, this part of um, components or elements helps out Southeast Asia, and uh, it's actually not help that is cause Southeast Asia to think more what kind of situation to be having within by this situation we have diversity. So before um, I, I come quite late, but before you started this lecture today, you have a whole do you have a whole picture or have a knowledge about the knowledge of South um, ASEAN? Like ASEAN have three pillars just as the European Union they have um, ASEAN political and security pillar, they have economic um, security community, uh, economic community, and then social cultural community, right? So today we talk about political and security community. When we say that ASEAN deal with political and security community, the question is what is or what are security uh, problems that ASEAN is confronting? Um, if you look into the mechanism in ASEAN, ASEAN is dealing with many, uh, with they have many mechanisms or many uh, platforms to deal with our uh, security community. The first is ASEAN Ministerial Minister Meeting. The Commission for Southeast Asian Nuclear Weapon Free Zone, that is one of the problems that people ask like, okay, do you have even do you even have nuclear weapons in Southeast Asia or in ASEAN? But we have mechanisms in that one. ASEAN Defense Minister Meeting, ASEAN Law Ministers Meeting, ASEAN Ministerial Meeting on Transnational Crime. ASEAN meeting on drug matters, ASEAN regional forum, and ASEAN intergovernmental commission on human rights. We will look into this mechanism after this. One of the things that, um, one of the issues that could be criticized as the most critical aspect of the effectiveness of ASEAN security mechanism is the Treaty of Amity and Cooperation in Southeast Asia, and the abbreviation is TAC, TAC. TAC is one of the mechanisms that try to deal with security community issue. When, ASEAN, when the ASEAN was established in 1967, um, around 10 years after that, in 1976, ASEAN signed this treaty together. And this treaty, um, in Article 2, it says, ASEAN must have mutual respect for the independence, sovereignty, equality, um, interior integrity and national identity for all nations, the right of state to live national existence free of external interference, non-interference, settlement of difference or dispute by people means, renunciation of the threat or use of force, and effective cooperation among themselves. These six um, principles call, can be collectively called ASEAN Way. So with this three, six principles, we call it ASEAN way, and we can summarize or shorten it as that there are three main principles. One is non-intervention, and the second one is non-interference, and three is peaceful settlement. For non-intervention, ASEAN will not um, use army or force to intervene into other um, territory like Thailand, we are not going to use um, tanks or helicopters to invade into all the country. Uh, for non-interference, we are not going to criticize or uh, speak about certain issues of other countries. Like many of you might have heard that we have conflict between red shirt and yellow shirt, right? So many, many years ago, around 10 years, I think, that we have conflicts in Bangkok, that uh, the red shirt and the yellow shirt has conflicts in central, in the department so-called central world in the heart of Bangkok. And then people say that we have arson reverse like terrorist attack in the center of Bangkok. So some people even argue that when we was having those kind of situations in the center of Bangkok, people were killing each other because by the red shirt or yellow shirt. Why didn't ASEAN step in and criticize or do something to help resolve this problem. But because of this treaty, because of this, this, this tag, 
ASEAN could not step in because they are not going to interfere or they are not going to comment on each other or even when we have problem, human rights problem in Myanmar. We said because it's the political uh, domestic issue in Myanmar. So we cannot criticize, we cannot say comments, we cannot comment, we cannot say something or anything on the issue in Myanmar. So this kind of thing is a kind of struggle, it's like impediment that couldn't help ASEAN to solve uh, political or security conflict when we have it because of the trade of amity and cooperation. Another one is when we have ASEAN. ASEAN is, you know, people always say that ASEAN focuses on economic aspect, but ASEAN also have ARF or ASEAN Regional Forum. ASEAN Regional Forum, if I could remember correctly, I think ASEAN Regional Forum was created in 1996 or something. I, I can't remember that. But ARF has a very um, famous branches of cooperation. So actually, although it's called ASEAN Regional Forum, but the member of ARF is not just really limited to um, ASEAN. Even European Union, I mean the whole European Union as a 28 countries from European Union, they are also one member of ARF as well. ARF has many branches of cooperation like preventive diplomacy, counterterrorism and transnational crime, disaster relief, maritime security, bomb preparation and disarmament, ICT securities, which this one is quite new. I want to remember around 10 or 12 years ago, ICT security was not part of the mechanism of AI. Uh, another one is defense and peacekeeping. So let me show you about this map. People who might, uh, anyone study um, ASEAN security here? Or do you ever take calls on um, security issues in Southeast Asia? Has anyone have any idea on that one? No, okay. ASEAN, we have one of the pro one of the biggest problems that we have here, and it is one of the brands because it is here. As it is a maritime security here. So ASEAN we have problem at the Malacca Strait here. Malacca Strait, as you can as you know that people when the ship come from um, uh, Europe or Middle East or Africa or South Asia, the ship will have to pass through this um, channel, through this strait. And then because of there is privacy around this area. So one of the mechanisms that we need to focus on is how to ensure that the security situation in the Malacca Strait will be protected by um, you know, countries around this area. Particularly one of the uh, interested um, stakeholders or external actors that will help significantly to resolve this problem can you guess which country would try to help ASEAN to deal with this situation? The external actor is not actually the external actor who help ASEAN to deal with this situation is not ASEAN itself. It's Japan. Japan contributed significantly to this region by building up the what is that called in English um, lighthouse. So they sent uh, like defense troops to this area to protect the, the waters, the marine and then they help to build, um, they help build the, what is that called again? Lighthouse. <laughs> the lighthouse to protect the area. So the Japanese government see that because of the ships, particularly the ships that carry petroleum or petrol from, or gas, natural gas from Middle East, they have to pass through this and then ship it to Japan. So if more than 80% of Japan uh, imported petroleum and natural gas must come to this strain. So the Japanese government think that, okay, if this area is affected or is disturbed by the piracy, so the Japanese government or the energy security situation in Japan will be disturbed by the piracy in this area. So the Japanese government sent a lot of troops and financial assistance to this area to protect the area. So this one is quite um, traditional security that people try to deal with traditional security issues like piracy or terrorist attack. So we have a mechanism which is which are me the Malacca Strait of Sea Patrol, the original cooperation agreement on anti-piracy. So this kind of mechanism or uh, to um, to what is that called agreements will help um, the region to solve the problem of maritime security issues. Or we have this one, 
I think many people who study Southeast Asia will be um, familiar with this kind of situation in Southeast Asia. We have a um, South China Sea conflict. We call it South China Sea conflict, but the Vietnam they call the Vietnamese they call it West Sea con um, West Sea because it's in the West of yeah. East. If they call East Sea because it's in the East of Vietnam, so they don't try to call it uh, South China Sea because they try to show this is not a southern territory part of China. So this area is also protected or deal or dealt by the ALF member states. The ALF tried to deal with this kind of maritime security because they try to uh, five countries they try to claim the area in the sea here. So so you can see that uh, every country tried to um, claim the area of Spratling Islands and Paracel Island here. So this kind of situation is also um, what a traditional security that when people or other countries try to claim the land and they have to protect the land. So they are get all that maybe this kind of situation is getting worse and we have to protect this area by sending troops or dealing by protecting by law or think of it as a mechanism by using what we call asset centrality to protect the area. Apart from maritime security, we also deal with um, illicit drugs, chemical, biological, radio, radiological, and nuclear matters, preventing covering violent extremism and traffic, trafficking in persons. Some of you might have um, traveled to Sang Lien Kong Kang, Golden Triangle. Have you traveled to Golden Triangle? Uh, uh, when you went to, uh, when you travel to Golden Triangle, there would be a very fantastic museum in that area. Have you visited that? It's an opium museum. The opium museum in the Golden Triangle, it, the ticket costs around um, 150 baht. But it's amazing, one of the, one of the best museums in Thailand. I, I, I could say that because it's quite nice. I think I, it, it's supported by Royal Family. I mean, the, the, the organization to deal with Royal Family thing but it is one of the good museums that you can visit. It shows you how the Thai government changed the plantation of opium in the northern part of Thailand, particularly in the Golden Triangle, to help people to have a better life, uh, stand, uh, living standard by changing their um, agricultural culture from opium to something else, something edible. So the first thing is illicit drugs. When we have drugs in Southeast Asia, particularly in Thailand, um, they will traffic, they will send drugs between Thai and Myanmar and Laos. So this one of the things caused a significant problem to the Thai government. Um, if you have a chance to travel to Mesor in Bak province in the west part of Thailand, it's around five hours by car from here yeah, from Chiang Mai. Bak will be one of the area that you will have Mai River the Mai River will be like the border between Thai and Myanmar. And during dry season or during summer, the water level will be extremely low. If you can even play football or you can cross the river by walking. And then you can, when you have those kind of situations when there is no water in the river, so drug trafficking will, in that area will be severe in some years and people have to be very careful to deal with drug trafficking at the border as well as the, between the Mekko River that is border between Thai and Laos. When we have dry season and the water level is extremely low, the drug trafficking will be one of the issues that the customs and the police have to deal with at the border between Thai and Laos as well. The chemical and biological and radiological and radiological nuclear matters. These kind of issues might not be as severe as all the um, matters in this region because um, although we use nuclear to deal with um, preserv food, food, uh, food preservation or medical matters, but this kind of thing is um, January might have seen this before. On March the 1st, Thailand's northern city of Nam Pak, 97 kilometers from Chiang Mai, was covered with haze caused by forest fires. 
the pollution effective visibility and increased the quantity of airborne particles measuring between 80 and 88 micrograms per cubic meter. The Forest Fire Centre reported a number of fires in several areas, including Mailwai National Park, in which at least eight hectares has been burnt. Some of the fires were lit by farmers to burn agricultural waste. So when you look at the news nowadays, you might see that there is a case problem in Indonesia, Malaysia, and Singapore, right? But in the northern part of Thailand, so we also do have this situation every summer. So like this year, I think I moved here. <laughs> I moved here in 2010, and then I think this year, this year is the worst year that we have experienced the health problem in Chiang Mai. I mean, after I moved here almost for 10 years, this year is the worst. That the level 2 of PM 2.5 it, it exceeded, some day it could exceed to 400, or sometimes it's like 600. But before that, like last year, the, the worst one would be like 200 or something. So this year is the worst one. Now, in the southern part of Thailand that we have problems with Malaysia, Indonesia, and Singapore, they said the level is around 100 or 200 something, I'm not sure. But then, ASEAN seems to recognize as, um, the hairs in Man Indonesia, Malaysia, and Singapore seems to be the regional problem, unlike the hairs in the northern part of Thailand, like in Chiang Mai, or in Laos and Myanmar. This, the problem in the northern part of Thailand seems not to get any attention from the ASEAN Secretary, just like the southern part. But anyway, we also have um, another mechanism that we use here after this. So this is the situation in Singapore, Malaysia, and Indonesia these days, like last week. Um, this is in the northern part here in Chiang Mai. So they will use this kind of um, car to spread um, humidity or water spray and they spray water onto the air and then it helps ASEAN to uh, not it helps the, the air quality in the city it, they anticipated that it will decrease the particles in the air by spraying water so what ASEAN could do is that ASEAN they have the ASEAN agreement on transboundary gas pollution this mechanism is particularly used to um, implemented to deal with the problem in the southern part of Thailand um, with um, La uh, Malaysia, La uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, and Singapore. But what about in the northern part of Thailand? What about in the greater Nepal sub-region? This mechanism, the sub-regional ministerial steering committee on the transparent gas pollution in the Nepal sub-region, this mechanism is not belong to ASEAN. It belongs to the greater Nepal sub-region economic cooperation program which is sub-regionalism or sub-regional economic cooperation in mainland Southeast Asia. So whenever you move here to Southeast Asia, you might have heard that we have ASEAN, but another um, sub-regional cooperation or sub-regional initiatives that Thailand is focusing significantly is the Greater Network Sub-Regional Economic Cooperation Program or the GMS Economic Cooperation Program. The GMS Economic Cooperation Program was initiated in 1992 and then it focuses on how to deal with infrastructure connectivity in mainland Southeast Asia. But we are not going to touch upon that, but anyway, um, it will, I will show you after this how e economic regionalism and how the uh, economic transportation in Southeast Asia cause security matters to the region. Let me show you another dimension of security issues that the ASEAN is confronting. We are confronting drought and flooding in Southeast Asia. And one of the issues or one of the critical or the catalysts that cause drought and flooding is, dam, is dams on the Mekong River. Now, you, some of you might have heard on the television that we have um, flooding in northeast of Thailand in Ubon Ratatani province. But before this, um, maybe one or two months ago, we had drought. The water was too dry, there was no rain, so people were suffering from no water in the northeast of Thailand. But now, the northeast of Thailand is flooding. 
it is flooded by water from the, the Mekko River. What causes or what caused the drought or the, the, the flood in the region? So generally, environmentalists or political scientists will um, criticize the role of China on the Mekko River area. So as we know that the Mekko River started from China and then flowed to Burma and then Thai, Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam. So this area is using, they are, right there is that they are using water from the Mekko River. But as the Chinese government started to build dams on the Mekko River, so the level of the Mekko River and uh, um, what is that called? The, 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 what is that? Um, not just only the level, but I, I'm sorry, I can't think of the mechanic. Can you help me? It's like the, the speed of the water in the river is lower. So in that sense, when the speed is, is lower and the level is decreased, so the livelihood of the life, the life of people in the riparian area or people have, who must use the macro river as their daily life, they suffer from the changes in that sense. So when, one of the issues that um, trigger uh, environmental problem in this area is at the Mekko River Delta. Generally, fresh water from the Mekko River will flow from this area and then they will push sea water back to the sea, right? But because when they decrease the, when the level and the speed of water is lower, so the sea level, the sea water will get into the land more. So the problem will cause a uh, right farming here. The rice farming in this area suffered from the sea salt from the sea because of the lower tide of Mekko River. And particularly when people from Chiang Rai province, from Chiang Rai, they located next to the Mekko River and next to Laos, right? As uh, Shaya, the presenter before me, he mentioned about the casino, and the other side of the Mekko River is on the Laos side. Um, Mekko River, particularly Thai people, um, we many people will eat seaweed in the Mekko River, the seaweed called Gai. So that type of seaweed is quite not mixed. Um, sorry, um, the battery is wrong. I'm not sure. Um, battery is not on the wrong um, So they, they need to um, eat Gai seaweed. It's like we have not chewed on seaweed. It's a seaweed in the river, in the Mekko River, and they use it. And that is, I want to remember that it's quite expensive. So they get it from the river and then they sell it. So when the river level lower, the um, the seaweed, the guy seaweed will decrease. So people will have uh, less opportunity to get guy seaweed to sell it to other people. So that's one of the impacts of the sea uh, the level change in the Mekko River. Let me show you this. As I mentioned earlier, that in 1992, um, the ASEAN, the GMS, we have another region, sub-regional initiative called GMS. GMS was initiated in 1992, one year after the collapse of the Cold War, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, which was in 1991, right? So when the Soviet Union collapsed, the five countries of the of the Greater Mekko sub-region area comprises of Myanmar, Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam, and two provinces in the southern part of China, which are um, Guangxi and Yunnan provinces, province, they uh, created a regional initiative called the Greater Mekko Sub Region or the GMS. So when the GMS was initiated, one of the area of mechanisms that the GMS focuses very much is the establishment of or the construction of economic corridors in the Greater Mekko Region or in the GMS area. The economic corridor 
is like uh, road, international transport, uh, international transport um, linkage between countries in Southeast Asia. There are three main economic corridors in Southeast Asia. The first one called, we call it East-West Economic Corridor. So it was started from here in Myanmar, in Malamang, to Bak province in Thailand, and then it would cross Thailand here, and then cross the uh, friendship bridge between Thailand and Laos, and then they would get into um, Vietnam. This is East-West Economic Corridor. The second one is Southern Economic Corridor. Southern Economic Corridor started from here, from the wide sea port that some of you might have heard it is um, Tawai in uh, Myanmar, and it's going to be a special economic zone in Southeast Asia. So it will start from the wide to Bangkok, Bangkok to Cambodia, and Cambodia to Vietnam. So this is um, the, the, the gray line here. This is Southern Economic Corridor. The third one is called the South and North South Economic Corridor. North South Economic Corridor, Corridor is the red line here. Yeah? It started from China. One we what, what we call it um, we if we go to Burma and then come to Thailand. Another one we go to Laos and then come back to Thailand and then from Thailand to Bangkok and then Bangkok to Malaysia and Singapore. This is East, uh, North South Economic Corridor. So actually because of this economic corridor, um, around eight years I think when we have um, when we when there were a lot of Chinese tourists driving from China from the southern part of China to Chiang Rai and then to Chiang Mai. So during that period Chinese tourists drive, they drove cars from China to Chiang Rai and then Chiang Mai. So this caused the higher rate of land, the price of the land in Chiang Rai is increasing significantly because it links between Chiang Rai and Burma and Laos and China. So actually after this economic corridor, that's how economic corridor were constructed, the land in Chiang Rai increased very much. So nowadays some people even say that Chiang Rai land price is lower than Chiang Rai because the more power economic corridor. So the Chinese government focuses very much on this one, not our economic corridor, while the Japanese government focuses on this east-west economic corridor and southern economic corridor. Now, why they talk about this? This economic corridor, although it seems to be an economic aspect or economic regional integration in Southeast Asia or all mainland Southeast Asia, but it is one of the issues that you will face security issue when you construct the economic corridor. Why international transport like this will cause security issues to Southeast Asia, can you guess? Do, do you have a student name this year? Can I pass it? No, I will treat you like my student in my class. Let me ask people from faculty of social science. Mikhail Agri Hereno. Okay, you're from you're from social science. You're from ACSD, right? So when you construct, um, when you have international transport or you have road that links between Thailand, let's say maybe Thai and Laos, what would be the security challenges that Thailand? might have because of this international transport. I guess that I have no idea but I guess that any transport that has to deal with different locations, both in Thailand and Laos, mm -hmm. also can be related to trafficking of maybe illegal uh, stuff, maybe drugs or I don't know. Yeah. People would say you can um, uh, for example, you can traffic drugs, or you can trafficking, or even um, how to how to put this. Uh, when this is, this is a report, we have a research on this one. Let, let me explain it. Um, when a truck driver they drive from let's say maybe in Mexico, they drive from Thailand to Laos, and then maybe they will want to have rest, 
with a woman. And many times they want to use cocktail, they want to use any protection. So from the studies in the past, it seems that uh, uh, it seems that when, when a driver they drove um, from Thailand to other country and then they don't use cocktail or they don't use protection, it will spread HIV or sexual sexually disease, um, what is that called? Like um, the, the, the disease, the sexual disease from STDs. Thailand. Sorry? STDs. STD, yeah, from, from Thailand to other countries. So this kind of thing, or sexual transmitted disease, right, will um, spread from Thailand to other countries. Let's say this is just only an example, but it's one of the problems that even the Thai government have to deal with, like, okay, you have to transport things maybe drugs or human and then because of STD or even now say we have the program called um, I'm not sure is um, uh, I forgot the word is African have you heard the news about the the peak yes. what what is it called in English peaks African is a kind of um, disease um, from peaks that will spread to other people in Southeast Asia. So we try to prevent those kind of when we try not to import pigs from other countries to Thailand because if those kind of pigs affected pigs come get to Thailand, pigs in Thailand will get affected and then they will die and die. So this kind of although we have international transport, although it's a kind of an aspect, but anyway it will change. It will be one of the security challenges of our area as well. So I have more time and it seems that they won't allow me to show you anything more. Do you have any questions or discuss or want to ask or want to share your experience after staying in Thailand or traveling around Southeast Asia with me? Any questions? Comments? Or you don't like my cover point, you can say that. <laughs> Any questions? Yes? About, I have a question specifically related to the non-traditional security issues and it's related to environment and the construction of dams and mega projects such as mining mm -hmm. projects and how it, it affects also the local communities and may increase or escalate the political conflicts between indigenous peoples, ethnic groups, we have seen social movements in the region when the the the, what is called, the tide of the level of the level lever is lower, right? So the social movement will try to push the Thai government or ASEAN or MRC. MRC is River Level Commission. It was initiated in around I can't remember. MRC was initiated in around 19, I don't know, 1966 or something. That Mapo River Commission or MRC was initiated and is a regional initiative that specifically deal with the river, the Mapo River itself. So when the MRC, when the low, when the tide is lower, social movement in Thailand and all the countries in Southeast Asia will try to put pressure on MRC to put pressure against China. Because the Chinese government and Burmese government are not members of MRC. So you can see that although the Napo River, the main part of Napo River flow in China, but the Ch China is not part of MRC. China is not any part of any mechanism that deal with the Napo River because um, they said they are trying to help the river to have a better chance to cooperate like they said the dams will not destroy environment of the environment so i think maybe um three or four months ago the official officers of the chinese embassy in bangkok he wrote an english article in bangkok post i think he, he tried to argue that the dams contracted by the china by china is is actually is helping the Mako River to improve its river, its flow, its flood, and the drought in the region. But around one or two weeks after that article, 
and all the social movement authority in Thailand, they wrote another article trying to argue against that um, claim of the Chinese Party in Thailand. And he says that if you look into the fact, you look into the situation in the region, social movement in Thailand and in the region, they try to push or try to against the deaths in China to protect the environment. And one of the movements that is actively against or try to uh, promote environmental protection is the Mako River called the Mako Wash. The Mako Wash is a Japanese NGO located in Akihabara in Tokyo. And they also have a headquarters in Bangkok as well. Um, Akihabara, uh, no, the Mako Wash is a Japanese run NGO and this NGO is quite well known and they try to help develop the Mako River environmental issues as well. So I think it's uh, the, the, what is that called, matters. But this kind of things is one of the issues that we have to think in the future, particularly when we have terrorist attacks in some part of Southeast Asia. So biological and radiological and chemical weapons, that is one of the things that we try to prevent it, not to let the terrorists use it in the future. The second thing is violent extremism that is understandable because we have terrorists and extremist groups in Southeast Asia. So we have to deal with, you know, this kind of people and groups or um, movements. Trafficking in person. Trafficking in person is um, getting serious because of when people try to traffic uh, humans to all the country. And when you, some of you might heard that we have, I, I don't know how to translate it in English. We call, in Thai we call it like little ghost that Thai people move to South Korea illegally, or maybe they act that they are going to be a terrorist, and then, uh, not terrorist, sorry, to be a uh, tourist from Thailand to Korea, and then, when, then they get into Korea, they will escape the tour guide, or then they will flee, or then they will fled, and then they will you know, try to do illegal um, jobs. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not illegal, but they, but they would that uh, illegally. But then we do jobs like waiter, waitress, or maybe um, what is that called? Prostitution or some illegal matter. So that kind of little goes from Thailand to other to South Korea is another issue that Thailand the Thai government is dealing with. Another issue that is increasing uh, that um, gaining attention or um, significant from the government is ICT. Um, security. So they try to promote transparency and develop confidence building measures to enhance the understanding of AIF and rise awareness of the threat related to the security and the use of ICT, enhance practical cooperation between AI participating countries to protect ICT critical infrastructure and improve cooperation including develop regional capacity. So ICT is quite new and ASEAN is uh, we're trying to um, expand our this mechanism with external uh, with the external countries like Japan. The Japanese government has been showing it eager to help Southeast Asian countries to develop ICT security matter very much. It seems that the Japanese government uh, recognizes this uh, mechanism as one of the areas that the Japanese government can contribute to the region. So we will see in the future that how the Japanese government will help or will contribute financially or technically in terms of you know um, the uh, academic contribution to the region by providing technical assistance through ODA. So that will be in the future trend. So apart from traditional security, we are seeing non-traditional security in Southeast Asia. Now let me show you this clip first. Um, some of you who might stay here since um, January might have some people or some women in Chiang Mai because that kind, that woman that woman who kidnapped in Chiang she actually she's from Chiang Mai and there is a one NGO try to bring her back from the north from North Korea and they try to use mechanisms in original mechanisms to bring her back but then it seems that when we try to push these kind of issues to as a this is a human security issue of the region that people in South Asia might be in the case that they might be kidnapped by the North Korean. 
but then the the scope or the definition of North Korea uh, of AIF on human security as it because it's quite narrow. So the tax or the force or the the, the what is it called? The duty of AIF might not cover all the definition of human security issues. So in my opinion, I think it is because of the the narrow definition of human security of AI as well. But now the situation is getting better. What I could remember when I studied my, my master degree, it was in 19, no, um, 2007. I think during that time we didn't even have ASEAN's Commission on Human Rights or something. It's called ASHA or something. It's, it's kind of mechanism to deal with human security in ASEAN. But then after that, I think the ASEAN mechanism on Human Rights was initiated around that time, I think. Oh, I can't remember actually. And then that kind of movement signifies the importance of human security or human rights in ASEAN is getting more interest from the ASEAN Secretary itself. Any more questions? So seeing none, I think I'm going to end it with this. Thank you very much for today. Thank you very much. Um, we have learned so much and um, could be, we could also use in our classes and as we like analyze the community around us as ASEAN as well and um, thank you very much. So now um, before we have a lunch um, because many of you would not be here in the afternoon we would like to use a short time here just to get to know one another because we might not get to know everyone because some would leave for class and some have appointment with professors. So um, to do that, we will pass down the microphone to each one of you and then you could say your name. Um, if you want to say your age, fine. Uh, you want to say what faculty you're in, what major or what country you're from or some maybe one thing that you like about Thailand, for example. So say, um, hi, my name is Sarah. I come from the Faculty of Political Science, majoring in international affairs. And I come from Thailand. And I like the food, especially sop tam here. That's it. OK? Right. We'll start with you. OK. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Miguel. I come from Spain. Uh, I am studying here in the social science faculty. Um, so together with my colleagues, we are part of a master's in uh, humanitarian action, and we are here for six months. Uh, and from there, on, I also love the food, especially fried noodles. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Tamara. I come from Spain. I'm studying here in I'm also starting the same program of media, so I will be doing that And I'm in love with city mango, city rice mango. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Mathilde, I'm from France. Um, I'm from the same program, and um, I love fried noodles as well, <laughs> and sticky rice mango as well. And um, I love the mountains of Thailand. Voilà. Hello everyone, my name is Min. It's a part of my Chinese name. I come from China. Uh, Xiamen City is a, uh, it's an island in China. It's near the ocean. Uh, my major is uh, language music. Uh, my major is English major, but my Chinese, uh, but my major in China is teaching Chinese as a second language. You know, teaching English as a second language. My major is teaching Chinese as a second language. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, hello everyone, I'm Lin and I'm from China and I will live uh, here for my months. You might want to um, tell us what is the one thing you like about Thailand here? Uh, my favorite food in Thailand is mango and uh, coconut and uh, mm -hmm. so many fruits. And, and the other brand next to you? No, my favorite. Anything, anything, in Thailand, anything. Uh, the people, yeah. the people, yeah, the people 
very friendly person and the life is very slow. Yeah, <laughs> I like slow life. Hi everyone, um, I am Maria, I am from Guatemala, Latin America, I am from RCSB. As you already know, I'm 25, I have a bachelor degree in international relations, and what I love about Thailand is also its people and those who can. Hello guys, uh, this is Ronnie from Bangladesh. Uh, I came to Chiang Mai last month. Um, I'm studying at ICDI, International College of Digital Innovation. Um, my major is financial technology. And uh, I studied law back home. Uh, uh, so far, uh, I have been uh, really immersed with the Thai culture. So the people are very friendly and uh, the food is pretty spicy for me. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but I'm enjoying so far. And uh, my favorite food is cow soy. Mm -hmm. Okay, hello everyone. I'm Nan. I'm from Crystal and I'm from the Central City of China, Beijing. Uh, and I'm going to attend a short time exchange program in Chiang Mai University. So, but actually, I'm going to go back to China in October. Uh, I mean, the second of October. And the food I love in Chiang Mai, maybe the Gao Pao. Gao Pao. Oh, it's chicken. Gao Pao. Thank you. Uh, hello everyone, my name is George. Uh, I'm from Germany. I study at Humanities mostly, also at uh, Business Administration, but as one class. Um, what else? What I like about Thailand is the people, of course, and I also like food, like what's all right, like he does. <laughs> nice to meet you. Hello everyone, my Chinese name is Wu Kai Yu, and my English name is Katia. Uh, I, I have been in Thailand for one year. I'm, stu I'm studying nursing, a uh, master's degree, second so year, and my graduate is I got a gerontology nursing. Um, before I came here, I have been a nurse for six years. So I'm, I'm, I'm not young. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the favorite food in Thailand um, for me is papaya. Hello everyone, I come from China, my name is Kara, and uh, I like the, I very like the many kinds of foods in Thailand. I never see it in China before, and uh, I want to, I want to know more about the cooking culture in Thailand. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Jesse, and I'm from Chengdu, China, and. I have been here for the past year, and I major in nursing too, and I love people here also, because they are caring and friendly. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name, my name is Guitar, because I like guitar. I like playing the guitar, so I made this name. And my major is international relationship, and my favorite Thai food is <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Shu. Uh, this is my English nickname. And I study English in a uh, language institute in CMU. And my, uh, in China, my major is international relations. Uh, the most things I like here in Thailand is, is uh, I think it is a good place to communicate with different countries of people and make friends with them. Um, I think it is a good chance to, to be here to take part in the cross culture uh, class. And Hello everyone, my name is Chung. And Gita and Xiu is my classmate. We are the same major relation, international relations. And I like Chiang Mai. I like this. I like their people and food. My favorite food is Khao Khao Mu and Khao Mu Mao Mao. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my nickname is Doc, and I'm also studying in the major international relationship. Uh, we are just came here the last month. Uh, so, uh, I, I like to. Uh, 
Uh, both in my life in China, it's the animals, like the dogs and birds here, they look step by me. <laughs> they look comfortable, so I think um, hello everyone, my name is Molly and my Chinese name is Xiu Yi Huang and um, I come from Chengdu, China too and my major is um, nursing. I have been here for one year and I have to stay here another year and it's a good opportunity to be here to communicate with uh, people from different different countries and I love fruits here and they are sweet. I think like people here. Thank you. Hello, hello everyone. Nice to meet you guys. My name is Vlad, that we live in Thai and I'm from faculty of nursing and I love the cooking and also the food in Thailand. Maybe you have a great time for cooking in this fighting. Hello, my name is Sam. I come from Thailand and I'm from faculty of agriculture, majoring in economy and agricultural economies. And I like so now we know each other. Um, hopefully, we still like try to get to know more of the other person and possibly remember the names as well. Because I also can't remember you guys' names. But um, so be before uh, we go back to uh, we go to lunch. Um, earlier, I was saying that we will be um, picking our buddies. But um, unfortunately, there will be only about three ties that will be joining us throughout the whole program until um, Friday. So um, the three ties would be your main um, explain um, guide there or a translator in a way. So we um, and also like you guys can can like. You know, get to know one another too. And if you have any question, I believe there are staff that will be helping you. I'm so sorry I cannot join you throughout the program. I would love to. It would be very fun to like get to know you guys. But unfortunately, I have my research to do. But um, for now, we're gonna come back at one. Make sure you come back here at one, and now we're gonna go for lunch. So you're free to go. Okay. So, um, did you have a good lunch? Yes. yes? Um, what was your best out of the things that we ate? Was it the pork, the dessert? The dessert? The dessert? Yes. 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 Um, who here like the noodles? The noodles with the curry thing? You do? Okay. Um, what else was in the menu? Uh, the, deep, uh, the fried vegetables? Okay. Um, so we have new faces here too. So would you like to introduce yourself? Maybe your name, major, from what country, and one thing you like about Thailand. Okay. Um, hi, my name is Sarah Price. I'm from the United States, and I'm with the four uh, NOHA students uh, getting a master's in international humanitarian action. And I love Thailand because I love the Thai team. <laughs> wow. Um, well, we've got two Sarahs here, then. Yes. <laughs> Hi. Hi. There's always another Sarah. Right? We have another Sarah in our class as well. Oh. <laughs> and we have another new face here. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. My name is Nath. I'm Thai people. Now I study uh, cosmetic and pharmacy in the university. A master degree. Nice to meet you. And then we've got two more new. Um, would you like to introduce yourself? Your name, your major, what country you're from, and one thing you like about Thailand. Um, my name is Jia uh, I come from China, and I'm uh, starting in. Um, I started in. Um, 
she taught in the last and uh, I majored in um, English and uh, Thai language. Okay, major in English and Thai language. Okay. One thing, one thing you like about Thailand. One thing. security community and and right now we are having a special lecture um, from associate professor Dr. Nisit Pantami about the direction of ASEAN's economy. So um, Dr. Nisit was asking me that um, if anyone if anyone here would like to ask a question we can do before we get into our studies. If anyone just has a question that you want to ask before you learn, I will pass the microphone to you. Anybody have just a, any random uh, question about ASEAN's economy? I think you have uh, a million questions. <laughs> and you have a million reasons to be quiet. But here is a Thailand, so you have no choice, but you have to speak. So it's my Order. <laughs> so I try to break the eyes in the afternoon, you know, instead of listening to from the one way direction, it's better to give some the opinion. Not argument, but something we call a change. That's why, you know, our the objective of this talk. Especially my lecture, I found out that thirty percent of the PowerPoints seem to be interested. And 80% of the 30% seems to be boring. So I keep just 20% in my talk, and then you can have it, and you can bring it back home. Because you can download it, you can just buy it in anywhere. But I bring the case studies. You're gonna have a one hour with me. So I would say that my uh, talk will be in formal uh, conversations way, right? why Thailand is called the hub, and why we have to talk, what things have you like about Thailand? And somebody said, I, I don't know about environment. I used to have the same questions to the student. You know, why do you pick the faculty of economics at the Chiang Mai University? And she replied me, oh, because Chiang Mai University is beautiful. And I, I asked her again, Economic is a good sign. You know, it's good for environment, it's good for human being. So Ching University is good to study that. Yeah, it's still very beautiful campus. So our selling point seems to be the location advantage. That's why ASEAN is based on this kind of thing. Our regional advantage. That's why you now see a lot of new faces from China and also some programs from the US. And Sarah, you also from the international uh, studies or relations, if that's what you mentioned about the master degree, right? Yes, I do the international or the masters in international humanitarian action with no help. Okay. All right. So welcome to my city. So Chiang Mai now have a three selling points. A local, a region a regional and a global. Why I try to convince that? Because this is the aim of ASEAN. And from this morning, you heard about ASEAN identity and ASEAN security. But how can they combine into ASEAN's like a centrality? So ASEAN 
centralities mean like a hub. Don't forget that ASEAN carry 10 countries. Right? That's a good question is, why we still have more countries want to play part with ASEAN? Don't forget the EU, right? One country wants to step out. <laughs> but here, even China wants to step in. That's why we call ASEAN plus one. Okay, I have a question one. I think you have any things to look I would just say that um, it's not exactly, I mean, I wouldn't compare the ASEAN and the EU on certain points. Yes. And Great Britain is leading at this point, I mean, hopefully they, or not, I don't know. Whatever. Uh, the reason for leaving is based on economy, but it's not solely on economy. For, I mean, they're not living solely for economic reasons, and from what I understood, ASEAN is based a lot on self-determination and mm. intervention and okay. self-governance, whereas the EU is more based on something that tends to be at some point one day, a whole generation states, and I don't think ASEAN, ASEAN has the same purpose as the government. Right, okay, now, we get the very good point, okay? So, what's the name again? Matilda. Matilda from? French. French, okay. Have the good answer. That is the difference between ASEAN and EU. I also apply the same question to students in class. What the difference between EU and ASEAN? And ASEAN seems to be a long way to go because EU seems to be our you know, role model in the way that we want to get the community. Right? ASEAN economic community that happened in the year of 2015. But from this morning, you said that each country seemed a long way to go to achieve that same thing, like EU just passed that kind of period. Okay? Do you know what is the difference between from the EU and ASEAN in general, from you have heard of study? Beyond that, um, I don't know right now how many, more than 27, right? Some are under, uh, you know, applications to be, you know, past the criteria, right? You have, ASEAN also have the same, that we're going to have a new country in ASEAN, like number 11. Which one? Good. What is the number 11 in ASEAN? Uh, Papua New Guinea? Very close. Uh, is Timor? Timor. Yeah. Timor is there. Timor is there. Yes. It's coming. Huh? So it's coming. Uh, Timor is there. That's got in different than not so long ago. Yes. All right. And now, why <coughs> in ASEAN? How many currencies that play important roles? Currency, right? Currency is the national currency. You have Thai baht, right? During you stay here. You also have but EU. You have Euro currency. But there's also different currencies as well. Right? But they can apply to different countries but on the same agenda, right? That Eurozone. In the Eurozone, except England. Well, no, it's Sweden, Denmark. It's, 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 it's part of the contract, kind of. The contract, they have a the different layers. Yeah. Yeah. But in ASEAN, we do not have single currency. We do not have one currency like Euro. We plan to, but something is didn't work. Something is didn't work means a difference of development, a difference of, uh, you know, under the, each government that have the, some uh, politicals and some, you know, regimes differ to each other. Okay, 
Let me start with C, Cambodian. All right. Don't need to look at the PowerPoint. Just follow your dream. <laughs> Cambodian. What is the currency of Cambodian? Real. Real. Okay. R I E L. Right. But have you been to Cambodia? Not yet. No. Okay. You should go. I I will go. Please. I'm going what from uh, Ajahn Chayapak mentioned this morning. 16 million, right, Dr. Chayapak? Ajahn Chayapak? 16 million. But why it had just 16 million? Because the history that probably the longer and older than Thailand. Thailand now, we have about almost 68 or 69 million. Anyone? I will make a mark and also they get a special reward. The question is, why Cambodia? That about the history start earlier than Thailand. The population only have just 16 million. But for Thailand, you know, they probably start something, you know, rather from the history. We are not older like Cambodia, but we have 68 or 69 million. Now we're talking about what's the matter for the number of populations in ASEAN. Now we have Thailand, like a new country, right? Are you from Thailand? Yes. Okay, we have 68 or 69, right? Million. And you sometimes think about why they have just only 16 million in Cambodia. Is that because of the Khmer Rouge? Mm -hmm. Have you heard this story before? Yes. yes. Now, if you go to Cambodia, you're going to see some uh, stories, some things that you should visit. But the story is just spend my class about probably at least a couple weeks to understand about the history before you understand about economy. Why? Cambodian real is less you know, attractive compared to the US dollars. US dollar is probably more you know, used, more applied in Cambodia than the national currency that you mentioned. Real. Why Cambodia? You not trust their own national currency? Because after Khmer Rouge, right? Everything had to start to rebuild, to renovate, and build up the system. That just happened from a modern period of economy of Cambodia. 1980 something, not too long ago. So most of economy has to run by in the national currency. In the national organizations, NGO. That's why you have to have the money that people accept, right? Think about United Nations. They have to bring the currency that they can hide and can pay for the laborers to work and start everything from zero. This is Cambodia. Okay? Right now, the number of the labor force still work under $2 per day payment. Mostly they work in the garment industry, just like Chayapak mentioned this morning. And they are still young. Any questions about currency? Let me add more. I used to interview some of uh, Cambodian businessmen. Like why you trust dollars of the foreign currencies more than the national currency. 
something uncertain yet. What does something mean in Cambodia? The government. Stability of the government depends on one party. Right? They have the opposition's party, but do you know what happened, right? The Prime Minister made the opposition's almost disappear by something that they cannot come to election. That's why Prime Minister Hun Sen having come back into the second term. I said, but why do you still carry uh, dollars? Dollars in Cambodia is just like uh, you can carry some certain thing and you can fly back for any time just in case something happened in Cambodia. Is that convincing? Not yet? All right. But rich countries heavily invest in Cambodia. Let's make a top three. China, Japan, South Korea. I did not have anyone that I can interview, but you have to check with the interest rate in Cambodia that they are offered the number of interest and borrowing rate and saving rate is very high. Higher than the other countries to induce the money to come in and invest. And most of the investment, of course, you mentioned about three countries, they can bring the money. But the rest of the investment, remember Chayapat, when we were on the ground, repeat me here, I'm wrong. They invest by the building. It's not from the borrowing money. They invest by cash. How can you make a high-rise building by cash? That means the money that you own, you have a lot. Okay? And Cambodia is threatening countries. So I should move to that. Now, start with C. That's why you heard about C, L, and V. Have you heard about this before? C is from Cambodia, L is Laos, M, Myanmar, V is Vietnam. So, we talk about the countries on the upper part of Thailand, and then Thailand, and below, okay, that's Malaysia, and so on and so forth. What? Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar. Skip a little bit Vietnam, Thailand. Has something in similar. What is your major? Okay. What then? Uh, they have something in similar. Laos, well, they are main and Southeast Asia. Yes. Which countries? C. Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, Thailand. Mekong River, Chess, the same values of Mekong River. What else? Stay in the same upper portion of the Mekong River, we call GMS as well, right? Greater Mekong sub-region. You heard this before? Greater Mekong sub-regions carry six countries. Five, C, L, M, and V. And then Thailand. Now we have five, right? But what about six? Southern China. Southern part of China. When we mentioned about southern part of China, just Yunnan and Quang Si Chuang, autonomous. Right? Two, one province and one autonomous region. Yunnan has a broader connect to 
Are you from Yunnan? Are you from? Okay. The brother connect to Laos. Okay. To Myanmar. Okay. Not Thailand. Thailand has a border connect to Myanmar, to Laos, to Cambodia, but not directly have a border connect with southern part of China. You can go to southern part of China by Kong River, but you have to pass through other countries or apply over the sky of the countries. When you mention about GMS, it seems like we have players from China. That's why when we're focusing on ASEAN, not only 10 countries. Sorry, I did not mention uh, men, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Malaysia, Indonesia as for well now, but give me 10 minutes for us to talk about GMS. Have you heard that? It's from Wang Zichuan, southern part of China. Vietnam, Laos, northern part of Thailand, Myanmar, and India. We used to have the international trade before. Bell and Rod? Ita Ilu, right? You heard about this campaign? Bell and Rod initiatives. One bell and one road. They just changed in the 19, uh, 2015. Why Chinese government changed the campaign from One Belt, One Road to Belt and Road Initiative is very interesting. We can talk about it. But when they mention about this kind of route, they don't have the broadest or the barriers of language. No need to have translations back in the history. That's why when you mention about free trade, in modern economy, yes, not too long ago, but in the history, they occurred in this region long time ago. Vietnam, China, Laos, Thailand, Myanmar, and some part of India. That is just like the lines that cross the map. They have some the historical history book to support this, not because I made up. <clears throat> no translation. And that's why when you see the people from Laos, from Myanmar, or northern part of Thailand, sometimes you cannot make a difference. That's our popular one in Cambodia. They like desert, just like Thailand. They like sweet, but they don't like sugar. You are some kind of sweet, right? But you're not sugar. So it's very hard to say. But in Thailand, have you ever tried oranges? Thai oranges, what does it look like? Is different? Is, is sweet. So we really like sweet. Okay, but it's different. That's why Thai food is different from Cambodian food. You know the meatball, right? Pork ball or meatball. Have you ever tried? With the liquid, right? Syrup. Is that tasty? Sometimes hot, sometimes they put some of, you know, sugar in there and it's made like tasty. Have you ever tried the meatball or the pork ball that's made the noise at the same time like a fan? Bang. No? This is very, not joke, but a true story. Thai people, Thai businessmen, 
sell the franchise of this into Cambodian street food, but it's not popular. It's popular here in Thailand, but it's not popular in Phnom Penh, the capital of Cambodia. So that means it seems like artists, when we talk about rest of you know, like Cambodian or Thai, it seems to be okay. But the food is item slippers because in Thailand the food that make noise is still okay. Bang. But in Cambodia, when the foods create a very noisy environment, people scare. Ronnie, what do you think? Why they scare about the noise? Maybe they're silent people, like they like silence. <laughs> they like to be quiet. Sarah just mentioned not too long ago, they have some noise. Some of the painful period of the war make the people scared about the noise. It was not a good story, but that was true. That's why if you want to invest in the business, you cannot make the same thing as invest in Chiang Mai and do the same thing in Cambodia. How many plastic bags that you use in, during your stay in Thailand? You carry plastic bags? But they love you to have that, don't you? Right? They will ask like, do you like to have the plastic bags? In Cambodia alone, one person carries four plastic bags each day. Plastic bags that you can carry with like fruits, Okay? Around the Chiang Mai, they will see about the same thing. Next. Do you know how many average of wedding for the couple? You should have just one or two. You know wedding, right? Do you know how many average of the couple get married in Cambodia. That's related to the business. That's why I want to say three. Three times. So two is normal. So can you expect what kind of business that related to the weddings? Flowers. What else? Maybe I just one or two people here have uh, that kind of uh, happy time before. Even I am now in the you know recessions of that kind of period. Okay, let's talk about flower, food, entertainment. Before and after weddings, dress, outfits, camera action, right? Liquor, beers, restaurants, electricities, wedding studio, cards, US dollars. Why US dollar involved with weddings three times? When you go to the wedding, right? People just gift, just provide gift or like currency, money, just want to pay respect. And it was a three pack. When you have the wedding, people will come to your wedding. It's that happen in Europe, right? But three times. How much money? that you have to pay in minimum. This is Cambodia alone. How many times that the wedding happened in one week? 
That's why in Cambodia, political business is so popular. Beer is cheaper than Thailand. I asked some of Thai and Cambodian traders then, what do you think about free trade? Once we have a single market, they said, why do we care? We had that for a long time ago. What does it mean? Broad is nothing. Right? We have the word like struggling. We have like informal trade, even in Europe, I guess, maybe. Across the border, right? You can bring something in and out. And by international laws, if that country has no way out to the ocean, what happens? They can sell and they can buy something. And let's say not like free of charge, but they need to pay tariff. Let's say if you buy something from Euro and has to pass through Thailand to Laos, right? Thailand could not charge tariff. So from Euro, they can pass through Thailand by transportation route into Laos. That's why Laos also can sell the product cheaper. Because Laos is a landlocked country. You get my point? It's a landlocked country. And Thai people happy to go to Vientiane, across the border to Laos, buy some stuff and come back to celebrate. Cambodia about the same. And I'm not the players that Jerry is willing to answer for me. What countries are involved with the trading? Selling, buying. <coughs> not China. China is a new comer country. They want to buy. Singapore. I talk about Laos now, I talk about Cambodia now. But a distributor from selling and buying, they cannot, you know, directly come from Europe, right? They have to stop somewhere. So Singapore is also another nation for having the benefit of location advantage in Asia. Right here. What this means to us? To the world. What is this? Strait call. Strait of Malacca. And most of the goods and services of the world has to use this transportation route, right? across the ocean. That's why when you mentioned about Belt and Road or Italy of China step in. And what they want is if you can lower the cost of transportation here, which way that you can do it? Give me some alternatives to cut the cost of transportation. This morning, Jayapat mentioned about this side, right? Myanmar. Myanmar has a broader connect to Thailand from the north to the south, from the mountain to the Andaman Sea. If the labor from Myanmar, from the north, they have the other skills. But if you come from the lower part of Myanmar, you also carry another skills. That's different. That's why if you're from the lower part of Myanmar, 
normally they was end up in Bangkok. So mostly they also work in fishery industry. But from the northern part, do you remember, or if some of you heard, what is state that have the broader connect with Chiang Mai, Chiang Rai? State. S H A N. Shan State. If I can show you. What is the meaning of Shan? Shan. In Chinese. Shan means mountain. Right? That's why Myanmar still cannot claim that this all 100% done by the government yet. The north, the south still have some problems with the conflicts with the Myanmar. It's the biggest state and has a broader connect with China. That's why China play important role in peace price agreements between Myanmar government and we call ethnic group in China State. And China cannot make the railway, right? Go to pass through China State because security it's not 100%. That's why they pick the other area in Yunnan, right? Go to Jokpyo, a port, and carry just only the gas. This is for the conclusion from Myanmar. Okay, the roles of China. So, how many countries are involved now? I give you some more uncertainty things. I give you some of variable things. I give you the average weddings in Cambodia. Also, let's say come back to Cambodia. Why are fancy cars from Europe? It was found so many in Phnom Penh. Phnom Penh had a slang called Lexus City. You know Lexus, right? A Toyota Lexus from Japan. Phnom Penh is a represents about a huge gap of development between the rich and the poor. There's a huge gap of income gap. And what I'm trying to show is this. one of the certain problems in ASEAN that still cannot be solved right now is called Poverty. Income gap of each country still have a huge. The minimum income tax. The rich is richer. The poor is poorer. That's why education for Laos, for Myanmar, still remain underdeveloped in that circumstance. And that's why so many countries want to play roles like support about education in Laos, in Cambodia, so many homeless boys, child, <clears throat> all right, any questions so far, can you guess? What happened to Thailand? Thailand offer a higher wage. And we are shortage of labor. Right? In some jobs. When you mention about some jobs, I think probably most of the jobs. That's dirty, dangerous. 
and what else we call 3D. Difficult, difficulties. And all of these jobs has been work or hire to neighbors, neighboring neighbors that come across from Laos, from Myanmar and Cambodia. So are you with me? You can see that labor now move faster. They come here, they work. What they want now? Money, right? Standard of living. I think probably more than 60 or 70 percent of the same mind of, you know, we call low skill workers in Chiang Mai has been 100% run by the neighboring countries from Myanmar. So you can see that most of the jobs even in Chiang Mai University is no longer by the local people. The thing is, they earn the money in March, right? But how can they get the money in domestic currency like if some of the grandma and grandfather said that hey son, I want money because I want to make a new house I want to repair our damaged house or I want to go to the hospital what we need you have to send the money from Thailand to probably, you know, five or seven hundred kilometers away in Chan State. How can they do that? In few hours. Now, few minutes. How? This. What time that China start to do the early pay? Or PayPal in the US. But in Myanmar, they use this, the mobile banking. Long time ago. When I think we have not smartphone, but right? we have liquid phone, right? You just keep calling from someone in Chiang Mai to the company or someone at the border between Thailand and Myanmar. You transfer the money in March. They get the money in Myanmar currency in a few minutes. What happened to the currency of Thailand right now compared to Chinese yuan? Stronger or weaker? Taiwan is stronger, right? What about the US? You like one US dollar equal to 30? About to 30. It used to be 30. I used to stay in Wisconsin the year 2000. World Trade Center. 52 baht per one US dollar. So somebody said, why Thailand is so popular, you know, sorry for the mention, why so sexy? <laughs> <laughs> because people want to get more about compared to neighboring or neighbors currency. Why we just have more appreciate, right? Than the other currency, even RMB, John. Now you have to look at what about the situations in Thailand? What happened? What happened in Thai economy? To Thai, to Thailand. Because it's so well known, it's so popular, it already has a reputation for people to come in. Mm. So uh, I think the name is recognizable. So that's why people still come in. Because it's recognized. And, uh, Have you ever seen elephant yet? Yeah, the tourism. 
50% of the income in Chiang Mai come from services. 8% of our product come from agriculture. We used to have more than 50% come from agriculture. Thai student, now 9%. 2019. June 2019, statistically, service industry increased more and more and more. That's why you see the products of service industry. So what kind of service industry in Chiang Mai? Every five minutes, you see pink color. Oh, look like panda. Okay. You turn the other way, you see, oh wow, there's a green color. Yeah. What is the food panda came from? Germany. Gap. Yes. <coughs> Multinational enterprise also use Thailand as the ASEAN hub. Sorry, why not Hong Kong? Why not Singapore? Singapore has something. Yes. Location advantage. McDonald. Right? HBO, KFC, even Samsung. The headquarter in Southeast Asia or ASEAN is in Singapore. What kind of incentive? So you have to look at Singapore. Because Singapore had a slang called jump from the first, a uh, jump from the third to the first. Jump from the poorest stage into the richest stage. They skip developing stage. And they're good in education and training skills. That's why it's so competitive. That's what you mentioned to me. Right? In Singapore. The ranking of Singapore, of university, and also some measures is now top of the world. So if you ask someone, what do you have in Singapore? What kind of resources? Someone says, here. So human capital. In other slang we call, Singapore is a city, country. Because the number of population in your country is not a double million. It's less than 10 million. This is what happened to Singapore. Right now, how many banks of Singapore invest in ASEAN? Do you have a Thai account in Thailand? Do you need to stay here? Thai bank accounts? What uh, names of the bank? What color? Purple. Purple, okay. Siam Commercial Bank. You can do research on Google. Who is the major shareholders? One of them, I think, few of them from uh, US for sure. But inside each color, they also have some shareholders called Singaporean investors. So Singapore invests in financial sector in ASEAN. More than Thai invest its own company. Everyone knows Singha, Chan, for sure. I don't know, what, what is that? But in the Thai stock market, we could not release or increase the capital of Chan beer or Singha beer. Why we cannot? get the money from the stock market of this company in Thailand. The same reason why you cannot see the cigarette commercials on the TV. Because our country is based on Buddhism. So religions evolve. You cannot have a cigarette show us precisely in 7-Eleven. We have the time limit for selling, right? 
and go on in 7-Eleven. That is the law based on Buddhism. So most of the stocks of the liquors and beers has to be used in Singapore. So Singapore could be named the New York of Asian because of this. You have so many slides right now, right? Jump from the third to the third. The New York of Asian. But some Singaporean citizens said that uh, John is it, but don't feel jealous because uh, we also have trade off with so many problems. What kind of problems does Singapore confronting or dealing? Island, right? Most of the resources has to be import. That's why you see that Singaporean investment or business also diversify the risk, not in its own territory but outside. Diversify the risk. Malaysia just have the second terms of Prime Minister Mahathir. He's now approaching to hundred years old and he also set up his cabinet in a week right he said I did not have much time and once he was entered in his cabinet he said that stop or postpone or suspend the project with the Chinese government have you heard about this news? What kind of project that Malaysia have with China? The railway that link, right? Malaysia and go through Singapore, right? Here. Oh, it's so big new. It's very big new. But now, this project has been back into the table and also the uh, Prime Minister went to visit China. This campaign now has been continually with lower interest rate because most of the money come from borrowing, borrowing the money from the Chinese government. So the bargaining power between ASEAN and some countries seems to be still, especially the campaign of the railways. Who can the benefit from that? It's so controversial to discuss and beyond the scope of ASEAN economy lecture right now. Okay? Indonesia. Why we do not see much of Indonesia's news? I still want to sell my countries like Thailand is still the hub because even a concert will surprise me when I ask someone why have so many foreign brands or music groups came and performed in Thailand more than other countries. <coughs> the movie that released in the US, the premiere also have in Chiang Mai and Bangkok. That is we call the war market. So Thailand is very diversified cultures. We do not have the wide to genders, religions, ethnics. And this is called the global city. But if some kind of movies Talk bad about Muslim. Can you do that? And you know, like have a premier in Indonesia, Malaysia, even Brunei? No. Can you perform something like you know, you know Blackpink? 
Okay, A everyone look up. What is Blackpink? You know Blackpink? Very famous in Asia. So can you tell me what is Blackpink? A K-pop. Huh. I think you're from Asia that you can write a lot about these artists, Asia. K-pop, we also have J-pop, Japanese. K-pop is Korean, right? Why we do not have C-pop? Chinese. But have you heard about Thai movies? Have you watched Thai movie before? Have you heard something about Thai movie? What movie is? Thai movies? Yes. Uh, uh, Action. You know Tony Jaa? Hong Bak. Hong Bak. Hong Bak. Have you ever watched Thai insurance commercials? So, ladies and gentlemen, Thailand is an ASEAN marketing country. We are the market of ASEAN. If you sell the products in ASEAN, the neighbors will buy the products. That's why K-pop has Thai members. And her name is? Do you have the Chinese girl in K-pop? Do you have, have you ever seen the Japanese singer in that team? That is the strategies of Korean. Put artists in Korean and make people get used to that. That known thing is called soft power. And that's why Dr. Nirut mentioned, I come this morning. <coughs> you know Thai food? You know Thai dancer? We also have soft thing in your city. Elephant. Big man. We have so many elephants in Chiang Mai. But do you know how much of elephants can earn our value in Chiang Mai? 20... One elephant is worth 2.3 million. Now we have only 800 elephants. Only Chiang Mai, we have almost 100 elephant camps. More than 10% of the income of Chiang Mai is come from elephants. My this human, 10% from elephants. So in tourism industry, with our elephant, 10% is gone. <coughs> That's why I think even on the symbols of the bottles of water, we also have elephant. We also have Chan. We have so many streets in Chiang Mai represent elephants. So this is a clue. Chiang Mai cannot live without elephant. But sorry for Panda that we lose. Chong Chong, right? Sad enough. But that represent China and Thailand relationship. Right? You cannot own it. What is the meaning of Dong Tai Yi Jiaxin? Dong Tai Yi Jiaxin. What is the meaning of that? China and Thailand are families. Because we do not have the broader connect with China. Thailand stay in the middle. We do not have the case study of the South China dispute. We are in the, the city, in the, the area. This is called a proper state. That's why Thailand is probably among 
the interesting country. Indonesia, so many islands, thousand islands. Philippines still have the monsoons. But Thailand, flood, drought. Beyond that, no storm. We are in the, the area. That's why right now, what I can see from what happened in Singapore, Hong Kong is money keep coming in. Thailand. And that's why when you come into Thailand, what money that you want? Thai bar appreciate because so many people come in. Every 15 minutes, one try take off and landing. 200 price in Chiang Mai in two weeks. Flying off and out. I think right now they have more price. Where, which part of China that you from? Not of China. The name is. Thailand. You have direct flights. Direct flight from Thailand to Chiang Mai. When you fly from France, you can't sit in uh, Bangkok. But now, when I go to the US, we can use Chiang Mai, Incheon in Korea, and then we take off from there and go to directly to Hong Kong. Because right now, over the Bangkok sky is full. What happened when I said, over the sky is full? Many people fly more and more. So what we want in the future may not be the car, but a mass transportation. People travel more, right? Railways, planes. Now we have two players in this world. Boeing from the US, Airbus from Europe. You know, right? Who will be the new player? Because two are the opposites. Now China try to build the new airplane. There's so many, you know, pilots or captain training in Australia and South Korea. So many captains who fly for Chinese airlines now come from Europe, America, and Australia. So this is an opportunity it's called arts and economy. Okay. Sorry if I ignore some of the country like Brunei. Four hundred thousand people on that island. Most of the incomes came from natural gas or fossils, fossils, right? Oil. But now what about the latest technologies? We want to get away from car that consume fossil oil. It shows that the demand for energy in the future will have alternative. So the security in ASEAN may not be only the money, but also the energy security. Which country in ASEAN now have that kind of security? Laos, Hydro Power, Vietnam. From what I have heard, Vietnam has the nuclear power plant. But the rest of the countries in ASEAN do not have. That's why if you talk about who is a rising star, uncertainty is it depends on who have enough energy. That's why Vietnam could be a rising star of ASEAN when you mention about competitors in ASEAN. But for Thailand, you know what happened in the summer. Right? Something that we could not predict is when will the rains come. That's the story of ASEAN. And it's beyond 10 minutes of my talk. If you want to know more, Welcome to Center for Arts and Studies at the Faculty of Economics. I also still have five countries in my Arts and Economic class. 
you are very really welcome to like the visitors. Contact me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Associate Professor Dr. Nise, for um, your um, guidance on the direction of science economy. Um, right now, we would have a short break, and then we would have our next le lecture at So, um, because we are a little um, late, so say we meet at 2.30, we come back here at 2.30, you can have a break, drink water, um, toilets behind, and then we'll come back for another lecture on contemporary ASEAN pop culture. Wow. She's right. good. She's so good. So, please feel free to, to go. So welcome back to our last lecture. Um, so for many of you, did you try the Thai dessert? Those little things? Um, those are all traditional <laughs> Thai dessert. Um, I can tell you which name to switch later, but um, they're also one of the culture things that you can learn. And now I would like to um, invite Assistant Professor Dr. Amphan to give us a lecture on contemporary arts and pop culture. Uh, please give her a round of applause. Okay. Uh, hello everyone. Um, it's nice seeing you all. And um, before I begin my lecture, I would like to know a little bit of you. Um, just like, just tell me where you're from, yeah? Anyone from China? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, wait, what are you studying? Political science, nursing, and international relationship. International relations, oh, okay. Um, anyone from economics? No? Okay. Uh, what about others from from Thailand? Okay, okay, yeah. Uh, I know uh, MA students. Um, they probably have enough of me because they see me quite often in class already. But do I left out? Did I leave out anyone? Yeah, from from other countries. Okay, where are you from? I'm from Bangladesh. From Bangladesh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, nothing else? Yeah, China, Thailand, Bangladesh. Sorry, Singaporean. Okay, okay. All right. Nice to meet you all. So um, I was asked to talk about ASEAN pop culture, but in fact, it's, it's quite difficult to talk about um, pop culture in South Asia in one hour, right? So I cannot talk about like uh, music <coughs> of Indonesia, Thai pop music, or Singaporean pop music. I cannot bring everything together in one hour. So um, please allow me to just um, talk about the case study of Thai pop culture, but I, I will link it with the aspect of ASEAN. Yeah, I will link it with the aspect of Southeast Asia and maybe perhaps China as well. So um, the topic today is about Thai television drama, which um, have been recently popular in Southeast Asia and China as well. Yeah. So Chinese students, have you seen Thai TV dramas before? Yeah, you've seen it in China or in Thailand? In China. Okay, recently or when you were young? Or was you still young? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> you seen it recently? No, you've seen it with your parents? 
Um, no. Okay, okay, but not long time ago, right? Okay, okay I see. All right. So, um, for for some of you who might know that my interest is on migration, but I also have um, the other interest on pop culture. So I study about uh, Thai pop music. I study about Thai soap opera. My my interest on Thai soap opera, Thai television drama, started about 10 years ago when I visited this um, Chan State in Myanmar. So this is in 2006, which um, like sparked my interest on Thai television drama. So these these people you you seen in the picture, where did they watch Thai television drama? In where? Some look like a house, right? Look like someone's house. So they they watch Thai television drama in someone's house that turned it into a kind of local movie theater. So they would uh, collect money for maybe five bar per one time. So they would come to see this uh, movie every night. So they, they dubbed it in their own language and they watch it every day. So what, what the Shan people did in Myanmar is that they turned everything into Shan language, including the name of the, uh, the characters. So they turned it into Shan language. And it's interesting in, in this way of dubbing. So, because they turned everything into Chan, and the people said that they don't want to remember the names of the character that keep changing in every story. So they changed the name and they fix it. And the, every story that this character, this, this, um, this actor or actress play, they will use that name. So they, if, if, for example, um, for, for Thai Steven, um, there's a popular Thai movie star, it's called Ang, Ang Patilapa, right? Thai, Thai Steven, you know, Ang, right? So they changed name into Nam um, uh, and they just fix it, they just use that, term, that name in every story that she performed. So this caused my interest. So I wonder what impact of people when they watch Thai TV drama every day. So you can imagine that um, when they watch this every day. So what, what would be the impact of watching um, media from across the border every day? Yeah. You come, you come to understand that culture, well, at the very least, right, we tend to think that they might come to understand the culture of that country. This is what, what I was interested at the beginning. And this is how they dubbed it in, in Burma. This is the way they dubbed it. This is very low tech, right? Very low technology. So they, they just play one sentence and they just pause and they just dubbed it like this. You can see that it's very, very low technology. And um, so this is, this is a microphone, right? So they just speak in their, in their own language and just dubbed it like this. So this is how, how they did it. And this is a modern one they use, bring in the computer to use it. So imagine that about one million people watching this every day. So I, I when I visited this um, area about ten years ago, so I go around to watch Thai television dramas with them. So in in your mind, when you think about the topic that you watch something every day, like if you watch Korean drama every day, what would you what did you think about that people? Yeah? But the 
just ask some Chinese people when you watch Thai television drama, what did you think about Thai people before you came here? Yeah? No? What, what did you think about Thai people? A little crazy, yeah? How? Because I saw a television show about Thai people who are always crazy. The girls? Yes. Crazy in the sense of like fighting or crazy in what way? Revenge, yeah. So in, in Thai dramas, there's a character of bad girls that always like, um, take a revenge, right? Always like, engage in fighting, cat fighting, like smack or hurt or doing something violent to the female lead, right? So Chinese people think that Thai women are crazy. They're so, they're so mean, right? <laughs> that type, no? Uh, this television show. Okay, but, but my point is that um, when people consume Thai media, what would be the impact on people, right? Um, people perception about that country. So um, if you if you don't know where Shan State is, this is um, the neighboring of uh, area of Thailand. So the impact that I found when they watch Thai TV drama every day is that so um, the imagination about Thailand is become something that they want to they want to get because Thailand is more advanced than their home area. Right? So they, they see modernity in Thai television drama as something that they lack in reality. So they want to, they want to cross the border in order to, to experience something they saw on television. This is, this is one impact. So, and also, I don't know if you, in, in Chan State area, so if people from this area meet with people from above, or meet people from here, they cannot talk to each other. They have to use Burmese language as a medium. But after the popularity of Thai television drama that dub in Thai language, so because it's so popular everywhere, everywhere in this area, they watch Thai television drama. So after they watch Thai television drama, so they become familiar with the language and the accent is, is dubbed here in this area and is used a central dialect. So because it's dubbed in this central dialect, people here, because they like to watch Tai Chi drama, so they also come, become familiar with the accent and the, the dialect of the central. So after the popularity of Thai television drama, people from here, from there, from this can communicate in Thai language. This is uh, the spread of the language that um, even um, nation state cannot do it, but this is what television drama can bring in the language everywhere. Um, I, I don't know, do you know the Mong, Mong in Laos? Yeah, you know Mong in Laos, right? You have Hmong in China as well, but um, you guys know Hmong, right? Yeah? So Hmong also like to watch television drama. They dub in Hmong language. And for Hmong people, they, they don't have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. They don't have days in their calendar. They, want, they, won't, say, they won't say uh, Monday, Tuesday, they use day one, day two, day three. But after they started dubbing Thai television drama, they had to invent the words in their own language in order to dub it. Many new terms like 
mobile signal, they don't have it in their own language. So after they they got started dubbing Thai television drama, so they started to invent new terms for that, like signal, like um, HIV, like a lot of things. So Thai television dramas, in a way, become a window to the world for them. Yeah, so it, it bring in new ideas, new um, elements, new terms for them. And um, just a little bit about Thai television drama. Um, do you guys expect to hear something serious uh, about economics or uh, about politics? So I guess this this is afternoon session. So they. They think that you might be sleeping, so they asked me to come and talk about something light, not about politics, not nothing serious. <laughs> okay, Thai television drama, Thai people look down upon it and call it La Khon Nam Nao, which is um, Nam Nao in the way is very polluted, right? And the Nam Nao character is a portrait of unreal life. And they usually portray very luxurious setting, very over-exaggerate acting with melodramatic plots, right? Um, melodramatic plots, um, how would you understand melodrama? You, you know about melodrama, right? Yeah? Melodrama? <laughs> no. No idea about melodrama. Over dramatic, yeah. It's it's um the plot we were trying to create more emotion, right? There will be a twisted plot. Something happened in order to um, lead to the next thing. So this is what they call melodrama, right? So in, um, in many, many countries, they also have melodrama. Korean pop culture, Korean TV dramas also in a very melodramatic, yeah? Okay, um, so in, in Vietnam, so I, I started to be interested in this topic because um, um, I heard that people in China also watch Thai TV drama, people in Vietnam also watch Thai TV drama. And this, this um, just started about 10 years ago or less than 10 years ago. They started to import Thai drama to broadcast in their channel. And this is in Vietnam. So nowadays, if you go to Vietnam, you will see that they there will be Thai television drama broadcast in Vietnam about five, six channels every night. Every night they will broadcast Thai TV drama. And also the channel that they watch it is also subtitled by the fans. Yeah, so fan, this is a Vietnamese language, so they would, they would subtitle it. And um, also, you know of this, right? Chinese? Yes, you know, this, this guy is very popular in China. Right, how, how would you call him? Right, right. Okay, so uh, recent um, TV dramas that he performed in China gained four, four billion views. Right, four thousand million, four billion views, which is a lot. So this is a Thai, Thai actor who come to play in Chinese television market. Yeah. So, and this is uh, the dubbing. They dubbed it and put it in a CD form, DVD, VCD in Cambodian language. Right, and. In Cambodia, you see a lot of Thai dramas uh, on sale on the street. This, this is the picture was taken maybe five years ago. So they um, they they dubbed it and they 
put it in a CD form to sell it. Yeah, this this might be one one episode might cost uh, um, one dollar something like that. So this has become a big business for people. And um, I, you see this is a catalog of Thai dramas for order. You, I don't know, you see the number here, right? Do you see it clearly? What number is this? Yeah? What number? Okay. Uh, this is very easy question. 300 something, right? So what, what is it? Meaning that they dubbed a lot of Thai television dramas from the history that they started watching Thai TV drama. So if you want to look at um, the history of Thai television drama, you can go to Cambodia, right? Because they, they recorded everything, they dubbed it, and you can have the catalog like this. Like the whole big book, which is a catalog of Thai TV dramas that they produce. See, this number only 300 something. So if you flip into the last page, there might be 1,000 something, right? This is just only one page. So they've been dumping it a lot. And you know, when, um, when there's some events that happen in Thailand, like the coup in uh, 2015, or the king's passing. So what happened with Cambodian people? No. Okay. Uh, history? No. Um, just just trying to make joke, but you guys um, don't get it. It's okay. Um, I I was just trying to ask a question that about when the this event in Thailand, like the king passed away, or the coup that happened in Thailand. So, what happened with Cambodian people? Okay, uh, okay, I will just lecture. Okay, <laughs> you guys. <laughs> um, so, uh, Cambodian people cry because they cannot watch Thai television drama, right? Because when the coup happened, then. There's no no broadcasting anything. Just um, the military government announcement. So there's no soap opera broadcast. Then Cambodia people don't have anything to watch. Then they cry because it becomes a part of their life. And when the king passed away, you know Thai king, right? When the king passed away, what happened to Thai television is that we stopped broadcasting anything for a month. So only black and white, and only something about the king um, activities. So there's no entertainment. You cannot even go to the bar, the park, because it's all closed. Then, because we don't broadcast anything, we don't have any form of entertainment. So neighboring countries of Thailand cry because Thai entertainment becomes part of their life. They don't have anything to consume. This has become like what you call the, the fifth um, element in their life, right? Besides food, housing, and whatever they need. So the point is that, that Thai television drama has been exported to neighboring countries of Thailand, legally and illegally. So um, this, but in the in the modern time, they started to watch it through um, modern technology like mobile phone. And also, if you walk on the streets, you see people watching Thai television drama um, in their everyday life in the market because they don't have anything to watch.
So, um, they, why, they, why they watch Thai television drama? Why, why not watching that one program? And it's what's available? Yes, this is one of it, what is available for them. They don't produce their own television programs in, in Cambodia, in Myanmar, in Laos, not in Vietnam, but in those neighboring countries of Thailand. They don't produce their own television program because uh, the market is so small. When market is so small, what does it mean? Le, um, there's no advertisements, not enough advertisements to to support the production, right? I don't know if you you know how much would it cost to produce one episode of Thai drama? Can you guess? I saw some some Thai students. Are you sitting in the back, right? Oh no. Who are Thai students? 10,000 baht. 10,000 baht to produce one episode of Thai, Thai TV program? Yeah. How much in China? You don't know. Okay, okay. Just guess. Just guess how much you produce one program, one episode. Two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand. Still low. Too too low. Two million baht for one episode. So um, you can. Imagine neighboring countries of Thailand will not be able to produce their own TV program, right? Because the cost of producing is high. And because the market is so small, they don't have enough advertisements to support. So Thai TV program survive because of advertisements, right? When, now when it goes online, then it's a hard time for them because they, they cannot gain um, advertisements from online that much comparing with television time. So in every country, we relied on products, cultural products from, the, from Thailand a lot. And you can see that this, this has been dubbed in Myanmar, in Chan State. So they would, they would dub this 10,000 copies and 10,000 copies, you could see that uh, when it spread to different provinces, they dub, they reduct it and they just like, because it's computer, right? This is um, CD, you can just dub it again and again and again. So it is estimated that one million people watch this Thai television drama every night. So, uh, my research project, I look at this, trying to understand the emergence of new taste among young audience in South Asia and mainland China. So when they, when they watch it, is there any new taste that emerge from, from consuming Thai television drama, right? Um, instead of watching Hollywood movie, instead of watching Chinese movie, if they watch Thai movie, Thai, Thai television dramas, if there would be any like emerging new taste among them or not. And I also look at, look at the new community that emerged um, from online fan subtitle groups and online subculture that um, today began to dominate the life of young people in South Asia and beyond. I also look at the um, new modes of consumption and circulation that 
right? Give rise to new regional flow. This, this has become a regional flow, right? If you think about this in a regional term, this, this is something spread into countries in South Asia, in China as well. So earlier we just talked about Vietnam, Cambodia, Myanmar, Laos. What about Malaysia, Indonesia, the Philippines? They also watch Thai drama, but they did not watch it from television. They watch it from what fans do the subtitle. So when a fan did the subtitle, they did it by the label of love, right? They, because they love Thai actors and actors, so they like they like them. Then they just put the energy into dumping this to share among their friends and their fans together. So, um, and also I also look at looking at this from a cross-cultural consumption of transnational media things, which um, it's, it's important to understand this from an ASEAN perspective, right? From a regional perspective, because now it's the first time, if you think about this, this is the first time, right, that cultural products flow from the global south. You understand the term global south? Right? No? No response? Okay. Uh, so please, if you don't know the term, I will explain. When I ask, if you know, if you can you please say yes or no? <laughs> No, I guess. From, from what I understand, the global south is, um, <clears throat> I mean, <clears throat> it is countries in the southern hemisphere, but it really, I think, is more of um, a way for people to say countries that are more developing. Uh, global south, actually, not not developed, not developed country. Oh, yeah, more developing. Correct. Sorry, I misunderstand um, the term. So Global South, well, the world divided into Global North and Global South, right? Global North means countries like Europe, in European countries, America. So we all used to consume media from the North, right? From America, from Europe, from Australia, from wherever they're considered as developed country, right? Or we, we also watch or consume cultural products from Japan, right? Like, um, what what do you consume from Japan? Sorry? Anime, right? You watch anime from Japan, right? Do you, during the time when uh, Pokemon game was popular, did you watch, did you use that? You play that? Yeah, you play that sometimes, right? So you also, some of you might be a K-pop fan, right? So you're, so you're so crazy about them, you can go to their concert, right? This is, this is considered global north or those developed countries, right? When you consume from Japan, from Korea, from America, what do you think about them? Okay. Um, Stephen from Bangladesh, can you say something? Sorry, can you that? Okay. <laughs> yes, okay. What is my question? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, when you consume cultural products from Japan, from Korea, or from America, what do you think about them? Uh, well, you know, it's a, like, culturally, it's a different culture. Like, yeah. I can say from a lot perspective. Okay. Like, when I watch a movie or any kind of television show from the Western countries, so sometimes it's quite conflicting with my own culture. Oh, okay. So. Sometimes like, uh, it gives me a different uh, like, feedback uh, 
Television as an escape, not reality, and also you you see the cultural difference yeah, yeah, yeah. in that. Okay. Yeah. How about other? When you watch something from um, Hollywood movie, okay, let's say, what would you think about them? What would you think about American people? Okay. Um, do you like them? Do you think that they are beautiful? They have high technology? Yeah? What What do you think about them? Sorry? Can you say that? Confidence. Confidence, yeah? Well, when you, want, when you consume something from Japan, what do you think about them? Cute. They are very cool, right? Cute and cool. So this this bring a good image on the people who who consume that culture, right? When when you watch something over time, that bring in a positive attitude towards that country. We don't want to think of this as soft power, right? Um, so let's. Going into the topic today that uh, we look at when they consume Thai television dramas, what do they think about Thailand? So what image these um, people perceive and interpret as Thai by the audience in these countries? And can regional feeling emerge from consuming pop culture? So ASEAN trying to become ASEAN community, right? And we focus on um, political community, we focus on economic communities. What about the bottom up? When coming from the grassroots level, right? People to people connectivity. So when people watch something that coming from everyday life of people, can they feel that we are the same? Region, can they feel that we are in the same ASEAN community in a way that EU might bring about the kind of feeling that they are in the same region? Can, can it bring positive attitude? Right? So today we're talking about ASEAN community, right? What did we learn in the morning? Politics. Uh, economic, right? So now, look at the cultural thing. Can, can ASEAN community emerge from the feeling of um, being part of ASEAN community by consuming cultural product, right? So this is, this is a question that I, I ask is, maybe I'm too ambitious to look at this from the idea of bottom up ASEAN community, right? Bottom up means coming from down below. And earlier when I talked about the global south, this is the first time that we have cultural product from developing countries that flow outside Thailand. You never had that before, right? You have it from the country that already developed like Japan or Korea or China, maybe. Um, but this is the first time Thai movies, Thai dramas have gone out of Thailand. It's just an interesting point to look at this, right? So, but rather than trying to understand this from um, soft power, you, you know about soft power, right? Yeah, what, what is soft power? Sorry? Information? Culture. Soft power is to influence people, right? To convince people 
to do whatever you think that is correct or is something you want them to do by using soft power. Uh, soft power is a kind of um, the feeling, positive feeling towards that that country. Like America use soft power in what terms, you know? Before that. Um, Sarah, you know, America used soft power in this region a lot. In the past, like, for five decades ago. In, in what form? Why not? Um, education. Yeah, they, they give scholarship to students from Thailand, from Southeast Asia to study in America. And once you study there, you come to appreciate their culture, you come to appreciate American way of thinking, of living, right? So this is what, um, what soft power is. But we try not to think about this in terms of soft power, but we look at this from the idea of cultural diplomacy, which is an exchange of ideas, information, values, and system with the intention to foster mutual understanding. So in a way, not to look down on the cultural aspect. That cultural aspect is it's very important in bridging or making an understanding of the country, right? So since this is the first time that um, Thai product flows out of Thailand, so I feel that, well, the question I might want to ask is like, can they become cultural diplomacy within ASEAN community? Right? Can, can or not? Yeah? No? Okay. Um, okay, so um, let's look at um, some aspects that I, I discover. So for the countries like Cambodia or Myanmar, they like Thai television dramas because of the notion of cultural proximity. Um, do you know that term proximity? Yeah? What, what does it mean, proximity? Closeness, Closeness right? cultural closeness that we share with um, countries. Like, um, so Cambodia is considered sharing cultural and religious elements with Thailand. So um, they, they watch it every day. So they, they feel that this is very similar, cultural and religion aspect is very similar with the Thai. So, um, when I, when I ask them to compare with Korean dramas, which are so um, popular in Korea, so export to Korea, to Cambodia as well. So they said that they don't like Korean television drama because it's not clear for them. So they said, this is not clear. What? Uh, what does it mean? It's not clear. Uh, they, they said that, oh, they don't like Korean dramas because the acting is not clear. This is what they said. So, um, they said that in Korean TV dramas, they tend to keep the emotion inside then therefore, for Cambodian audience, emotion need to be explained, clear. If you get angry, you have to say that you have to make your face like you're angry, right? So if you want to revenge, you have to really show that you revenge this person. So they said that Korean television dramas, acting is, and explanation is not clear for them. They don't, they don't like this. And they, they also said that they don't like 
uh, male actors because male actors look like women. So you saw you saw some Korean men, right? They look so cute. They have like um, long hair and they um, have like lip, lips like their lips are so pink, something like that. Yeah. So um, this is what what they say cultural proximity. Some some dramas that I ask them, even though it's about um, it's just about love story, romance, but they interpret it in a way of teaching them how to live their life. Some something like when the friend kind of steal their boyfriend or their husband, they said this drama teach us not to steal something that don't belong to us. Just like kind of interpret everything in a way that fits with their culture and their culture is also similar with the Thai, right? But so for some for some audience, they like Thai television dramas because it's portray modernity. Modernity in a sense of material wealth that they don't have it. Like Cambodian migrants before migrating to Thailand, they watch Thai television dramas and they see nice houses, they see everyone having mobile phone, they see that oh everyone driving a car, a nice car, so then they they migrate in order to get the same kind of natural world. And what about um, emotional effect? So um, you see what what is this that you can see? Yeah? No? <laughs> Sorry? Oh, okay. What about this? being in the same region can emerge from this or not. But if you look at this, like the images of Thai television drama, you will think that this is just like a very soft opera, very trash, right? It's like nothing worth to look, to watch it. 
it's the same, same all, right? But this has an impact on the audience a lot. In, in Cambodia, as I said, that they tend to take it in a very kind of teaching morality to them. And in Vietnam, you say, they said that they think that the plots in Thai drama are much more diverse than Chinese or than, than others because the, the setting is happening in many places. Yeah, so this is what, what they would watch. But also, um, there's also emerging test, not just a melodramatic um, format. They are also Burmese. Indonesian Cambodian audience like Thai ghost movie. They they said that Thai Thai movies or Thai television drama did very well on the ghost movie or horror horror movie. They they said that um, in Burma they used to import Thai television dramas to broadcast there. They have two two days or four days. Today's broadcast um, romance and today's on the ghost movie. So advertisements don't go to the romance at all. They always go to the ghost movie. So until the the station need to import only ghost movie to just buy all the ghost movie from Thailand. So um, they said that Thai ghost movie is the best because it's close to their everyday life, not like Hollywood goes, which good at effect, but in the cultural sense, it's not like Thai, Thai ghost movie. And for Indonesian, Vietnamese, Chinese, they like teen dramas. They, they don't like the kind of um, soap opera with the kind of fighting anymore. And Vietnamese, Chinese, Indonesian audience also like Boys Love. Yeah. Do you know Boys Love? Yeah. Are you fans of Boys Love? Yes. <laughs> BL, right? So um, I, don't, I don't know if uh, those coming from outside the region know anything about BL. Um, BL is like this. Yeah? Uh, so <laughs> this BL portrait Two young men, young cute boys, that um, having a romantic relationship, right? But they're not they're not portrayed as gay. You know, you you cannot have one um, one man that more feminine. They have to be both have to be masculine. That's why they will use the the very kind of root words when they when they talk to each other. They have to be masculine born. Yeah? And like like this. So they would portray life in the universities and then make um, make them have a kind of um, the party or cultural night or something and select the the king and queen, for example they might um, end up having a kind of feeling that they like each other, but they kind of confuse like if I am gay or not. In the end, the, the story would not, would not say that they are gay, but the story would say that I am just falling in love with this person without any kind of uh, sexual connotation, without any, anything to say that they are gay just because I'm falling to this person. Nothing to do with gender. Yeah, this is, this is what, what BL would do. The, in the story, might have a kind of scene like this just to make people imagine that if they kiss each other, what happened? And so what, in, in the whole episode, there might not be any sexual scene, but just one kiss, and the girls would scream crazy, become so crazy about this. So the, the star from Thailand go to China a lot because they become so popular, right? And then when they go to do a fan meeting in China, the airport uh, glass is broken because the fan kind of break 
to greet them, they follow them to the hotel. If they check, they check out from the hotel, the fans would say that, don't clean, don't clean the hotel. I want to smell the, the artist. <laughs> so they, they would do that, right? I, I don't know. Yeah? So this is, this is what um, Thai television dramas have made an impact in the region. But, um, so there are two different tastes across generation. Older generation watch Thai television drama from television, like they like the melodramatic plot, they like cat fighting. But new generation, when they watch it from internet, they like teen dramas, not so melodramatic, and they like boys world, which is fascinating. The audience of boys world are only girls. They are heterosexual women. If you ask them, they would say that they are not gay, but they just like to see that two, two cute boys having a kind of romantic relationship. They, some of them saying that they like them to be together rather than have a woman take them away. So this is a kind of jealousy if the woman take them away, but if the two boys together, then that's fine. <laughs> so, um, what can you conclude from the question that I asked? So, when um, the, the appeal of Thai television dramas in the region has some of them interpret Thai as modernity, some of them interpret Thainess as ghost, and some interpret Thainess as modernity. Right? They, they like it because it um, teach them a kind of morality as um, Thai television dramas often portray the two different groups of people, bad girls and good girls. And in the end, good, what happened with the bad girls? She will be punished. It's, it's always happening like this, right? You see, um, these kind of bad girls that always appear in every Thai drama. This is, this is a logic of Thai television drama that in line with the logic of Buddhism. Because we, we tend to make the characters like bad girls in every, every story. There will be bad, even female characters that we try everything to stop the couple's way of happiness. But we would have this in, in every story. And in the end, the bad girls will be punished. So um, this is to say that tidiness also equates with Buddhism. And some audience also say that high television dramas teach their morality. And Thai also is about class. Thai is about lady boys and third sex. So these, uh, these are something that the audience interpret from watching Thai television dramas. So in the end, the, the question is that if Thai, Thailand can become a soft power to the audience, or can Thailand have the kind of um, cultural diplomacy? Can the region become one from consuming Thai television drama? I don't know what um, what you have to do from from listening to the lecture. You have to do some work or not? No, just listen, right? Listen or not listen? <laughs> That's why. Yeah, can can this be a cultural diplomacy? Yes. Can you say something? Huh? So happy because um, Thailand want to make this as a cultural diplomacy, but you also don't know how to make it. Yeah. But can this be a cultural diplomacy? 
make people understand Thailand more. Yeah? No? Yes? In what way? Well, to look to have build a bridge between the culture and get an understanding of the way people Understanding of the way people live, people um, have cultural differences? Yeah, that's diplomacy, international diplomacy in a, in a cultural way. So I'd say yes, it is. Yes, it, it, is, is it can be, it yeah. can be um, part of the cultural diplomacy. Yeah. But if, you, if you look at the contents, like, um, even female characters, or if you look at the contents, like, very melodramatic, um, what what message or what kind of um, cultural elements that it would bring in to make an understanding? Okay. Um. Like if it's too melodramatic, then it may give a wrong impression to the audience. Okay. Like over exaggeration of anything is bad, right? It may get a wrong impression to the audience, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's they will Yeah. Mm -hmm. They like if you talk ask some Chinese audience, they would say that she said Thai women are yeah, crazy. Yeah. So they might, <laughs> right. they might have a general idea of Thai women, right? Uh huh. Based on the television shows. Yeah, they might have that. It's true exaggeration. Okay. Okay. But um, this is true for among some some Chinese people, right? They would say that oh. They thought that Thai women are really cruel because they saw on television that it was so violent. It might generate a wrong perception, but um, you know what? Chinese people come to Thailand to see is the third or um, the lady boys, right? They, they come to Thailand to see the third. Yeah, and the way we, we portray the third a lot in Thai TV dramas or Thai movies, people said that it's also show that Thai society is very open, right? It's open for cultural differences, so which is which is a good thing, right? Um, it it might bring good and bad images to Thailand in a sense, right? So both like Thai, you, you present the characters like this all the time, like. Women don't do anything, just like trying to get the man, right? <laughs> so people might think that mm, Thai women just don't do anything. But at the same time, as you said, that they also perceive television programs as just television. They know what's the difference between what portrays television and the reality, right? But. So if you say that, of course, this can be a cultural diplomacy, can it bring a kind of um, feeling of living in the same region? Regionalization, yeah? From bottom up, regionalization, you think it can? Yeah? Mm. Can you say a little bit more? Uh, well, like, uh, it brings the audience to the same platform. Okay. You know, like the Thai audience and Chinese audience, when they're watching the same show. Okay. Yeah. So psychologically, they are in the same part. So they can, they, the show can bring its two nations globally. Okay. So this is a perfect example of cultural things. Uh huh, uh huh. So it can, it can be part of um, regionalization, right? From, from bottom up. No, not like from the top down approach that all we, we become ASEAN community, so then um, from now on we become ASEAN community. Like EU say, okay, from now on we become EU. But this one is looking at that from bottom up level to see if, if they consume pop culture, then if they feel that they at least belong to the same region. So one why saying that can? I don't know about others. Yeah. So let's ask some Thai students. Yeah. 
you think we can? Do uh, you understand the question? <laughs> no? Yes or no? Sorry? Can? Can make people in the same region like the Filipino watch high television drama if you are in the same region? Yeah? Yeah? Okay. Okay, okay, all right. I, I will end my talk today. Okay, thank you very much. So thank you very much. Um, as an assistant professor, Dr. Ang Hoan Dipratikan, for um, your lecture on contemporary Asian pop culture. So right now, since um, earlier we were saying that we would have a buddy Picky, um, but because we don't have enough Thai students to join us to be um, to pair up with your buddies, so we won't be doing that. But just to know that there are how many Thai students is here? Can you raise your hands? There is three Thai students here, and I believe one went back. So that will be four. So these four can help you if you want tra some translation in during the week when you do the activities. And also, um, tomorrow, you guys will be doing the na natural herbal soap. So um, in the program, it says to meet at the basement operational building, Faculty of Social Science. But it may be hard for some of you to find where's the building at. So if you could all meet in front of the door, of the social science library. If you can find the social science library, wait in front of the door, perhaps at 8.50, and then let you all go down to the basement at nine when the program starts. Cool? Okay, so right now we will let you go, and I believe many of you have classes, so we hope to see you guys tomorrow and we'll hope you guys have fun throughout the week. Alright, come to class.